Um, today we are joined with Dave Beresford. I teach biology and entomology, and I teach in the Trent School of the Environment as well. Very interesting. And here, we're here today to talk about pollinators and specifically butterflies. In the Lady Eaton College office, we have painted ladies that we're watching go through the process. Yeah. And so we're hoping that you can tell us a little bit more about these wonderful creatures that we have here. Well, painted ladies are gorgeous animals. They're they're similar to the American lady. Um, they're not normally found in Ontario. I mean, they are found in Ontario, but they're not common in Ontario. Not enough that you call it rare, it's just that most people wouldn't see these all the time. But uh, they generally more southern animal, but they do get up here. And some years there'll be a whole pile of them, so they're here in abundance. So it's quite exciting that you have these and you're gonna release them, that, that's delightful. Yeah. All right, will they, when we release them, will they stay around? Are they just sort of? Oh, uh, they'll probably stay around. I hate to tell you, half of them will become bird food. So maybe a little more than that. But before that happens, they'll get a chance to nectar feed and pollinate. So it's life for a small animal in the in the big world is pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, you, you never know. Some of them might make it. Some of them might make it to lay eggs. Some of them might not. But even if they're bird food, there's no real downside to that. Mm -hmm. The birds eat these. They're still participating in the ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so are we. Yeah. And this is exciting. It is. Very exciting. Could you tell us a little bit about the process that these guys are going through right now? Well, their entire body is changing, right? So they went from a caterpillar, which is ideally suited to do what caterpillars do, which is eat leaves. And so they're on the plant, the mother puts them on the plant so they know what to eat. As soon as they come out, hatch out of the egg, they know what to eat, their mother put them there. And that's what they'll eat. They'll take that nutrition, they sequester that nutrition. Uh, it doesn't really hurt the plant, people don't like it to see leaves chewed up, but it doesn't hurt the plant. Even if a lot of leaves get chewed up, it doesn't hurt the plant. The plants are pretty tough. Then when they mature, so they keep shedding their exoskeleton, and the exoskeleton is the integument. It's, it's a tough material, kind of like Tyvek. Do you know what Tyvek is when you wear Tyvek suits? When you do renovating, it, it's oh. kind of like a white, you know those envelopes that are really hard to rip because mm -hmm. they're kind of plastic? Yeah. That stuff. So they're, they're put together like that. Their, their integument is laid down in fibers like this, and then another crisscross one, another crisscross one, and it's, it's strong like leather. Um, and it, the fibers are all oriented in different directions to give them strength in all directions, but it's very flexible. So then they'll mature inside that integument, then the, and they'll take some of that material, the protein that's in that, Skin is the wrong word because we have skin, they have integument, but you could say skin as a shorthand so people know what you're talking okay. about. So like for us trying to understand, yeah. it would be like the skin. It'd be more like a hide because they're okay. covered in, in bristles and, and things like that. But that's right, for us not talking about it. Then that will split open, shrivel up. They've taken a lot of the nutrition out of that. Inside now they have a hard chrysalis shape which would normally be under a leaf. Uh, to protect them so they'll be protected from rain not the cold though because they'll overwinter uh, and fall asleep then emerge when the weather gets good enough heat so that they can actually finish developing and then they'll hatch out so inside that they're slowly forming into butterflies and then that will split open and the butterfly will come out. Uh, the butterfly will pump the wings out to dry and at that point it's an amazing creature it can fly anywhere. It's just a remarkable how what good flyers are. That is so cool. We were really amazed. I never knew that it was like they were shedding their sweaters almost. And yeah. Like how it just kind of falls off and everything. Like that was such an amazing process to like watch. Happen. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the thing is that they know what they're doing. Yeah. So that's that's the other part. They know what they're doing. Their mother knows what she's doing when she puts them on a leaf for the, for her children to eat. Uh, they know what they're doing when it's time to, to emerge, unless we do something silly like trick them, like <laughs> put them in a greenhouse or put them in the fridge or something like that. That's not a good... I mean, it can be okay depending on your purpose, but it's best to let them do what they do on their own time. And then they'll emerge at the right time when the weather is appropriate for them uh, in order to then go out. And they're looking for sugar water, nectar. And the flowers, of course, very kindly provide lots of nectar for lots of different insects. And when they're feeding from the nectar, the flowers 
it's a it's a really nice deal they have with the insects. You know, we'll give you nectar, which is carbohydrate. All we ask is that you carry our pollen from one flower to another. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna ask you some more about pollinators and like the importance of pollinators and really what they do. Well, pollinators are critical to for the for plants to to exist and reproduce. The thing about pollinators is that we come to a lot of our understanding through our own window into the space. So we people as agriculturalists naturally are excited about bees and because bees are, give us honey and they, and they pollinate our plants and then we go from domestic bees to wild bees as pollinators but there's a whole host of other pollinators. Anything that nectar feeds is potentially an important pollinator. And that includes flies, mosquitoes and butterflies and beetles and moths as well as some birds but in the insect world uh, it's quite possible bees might not be the most important ones. Interesting. Uh, I always hear about bees being pollinators. I didn't even really know about the wide variety that and, a pollinator could be. Well, and I'm not trying to criticize bees. They're extremely important. But in terms of abundance, they're not the only pollinators out there. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of generalist pollinators such as hoverflies, butterflies, moths, and beetles that are also doing that job. The people used to try to scare us with stories if the bees disappear all the food will disappear that's nonsense that's absolutely nonsense <laughs> and, and those stories were told us to try to make us see how important bees are yes they are important but so are all the other ones that's the part that's so critical so are all the other insects that are yeah. important including and i hate to say it because i'm the first one to slap a mosquito when it bites me so are the mosquitoes important mm -hmm. and black flies and horse flies yeah, you can see how they all really come together to like create yeah. this wonderful world. Yeah, exactly. And the plants are diverse and they need the different variety of some of them are specialized. They have only one kind of insect that can pollinate them. Other plants have are generalists and anything that wants to come and take its nectar is is happy they're happy to let pollinate. Is there any plants that are specific to butterflies? Or are they general pollinators? I don't know. I'm not a so the, the part that's kind of funny is I'm not a butterfly expert. Right? And <laughs> there's there's so many insects. I'm a biting fly person. Oh, so my thing is like you notice I kind of craftily push the story over to mosquitoes and horseflies. Yeah, that's what I'm good at. <laughs> but I imagine they would be very interesting to learn. About they them are, well. but we're here about butterflies. Mm -hmm. I I don't know enough about what the painted lady pollinates. I, uh, to be able to tell you what plants it's necessary for. So uh, that's, yeah. but this book here, anyone interested in butterflies, wow. Lavery, uh, Hall and LaFontaine, this is the book to get. It's a brilliant book. This will just, it, it'll expand your world. It's, so I'm just, this is yeah. a Canadian book. These are great researchers. Anything I want to know about butterflies, this is my go-to. It's the Butterflies of Canada, Lavery Hall and LaFontaine, so okay. they're, they're geniuses, those yeah. three. I'll definitely have to check it out. Yeah. Maybe afterwards I'll have to flip through to see if there's anything about our wonderful ladies. And oh, I hope so, yeah. yeah. That would it's be really good. Cool. Um, so what sort of research then do you do? With, you do biting insects? I do biting insects. So horse flies, deer flies, uh, some mosquitoes, and stable flies. And my, what I'm interested in is, first of all, how can we prevent them from causing damage like in agriculture and so mm -hmm. to cattle like they can cause cattle such distress that they end up uh, losing weight and losing their milk they can also do this to wild animals um, but I'm also interested not just in them as a problem but as a benefit so if you think of deer flies and horse flies sure they bite they hurt they cause distress but amphibians eat them uh, frogs and salamanders eat them, newts, uh, all sorts of songbirds eat them, lots and lots of spiders eat them. So on balance, they're actually an asset. And so they're living in the soil. The only reason they bite is because they're living in a very impoverished food source. Okay. They don't get enough protein as, as larvae, as children, to be able to be uh, mature, when they mature, to be able to lay eggs. So they need to get a quick protein burst, which is blood. But they're in such an impoverished food source, which is generally uh, soil, uh, wet wetland areas. That means that they're able to take advantage of that. They're available for the other things to eat. 
So songbirds depend on them, amphibians depend on them, and yes, they're all little uh, creatures, and it's more interesting to think about the moose being harassed by them, but the little wildlife counts too. Yeah, they're just still very important in the ecosystem they're to that. They're very critical. important. Well, they're important just because they exist. Yeah. So this is how I look at it. it, it it's not just they're important because they have a task, they're important because they share existence with us on the planet, they enjoy existence, and that's good enough. I really like that. They're important because they exist. I like that. Yeah. Like, I feel like that should be the tagline. Well, sure, because we can't know what yeah. everything does, and just because we might not know it doesn't mean it's not important. Yeah, and they, like, everything has a purpose, I guess. Uh, well, yeah, yeah and cool. just to enjoy being alive, right? Yeah. To enjoy existing. Yeah, they still exist on the same wonderful world that yeah. we do. Yeah, and they make yeah. the world richer. And that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, to close this up, do you have any fun facts about pollinators, butterflies, anything that people at home might be interested in hearing? Fun about? facts about pollinators. Well, if you have a greenhouse and you want to pollinate, you put a bunch of houseflies and blowflies in there, and they won't sting you. That's, <laughs> really? Yeah. And they'll pollinate. Uh, so they're, they're, it's, it's kind of interesting because people don't think of flies as being pollinators, and yet you can catch them, and they're all covered in pollen, and that's what they're doing. Um, so it's, I guess the thing is, there's pollinators all around. If you want to encourage pollinators, the, the easiest thing to do is, is just throw some pasture plants in your garden, in your lawn. I was, uh, white clover or birch for tree foil. Uh, that, that's normally what you would have for a hay crop, but they'll grow only this big. They'll give you beautiful little yellow flowers or white flowers. And then your lawn becomes a living system. It's not just. And lawns are great. Everyone likes being out in the lawn, but it'd be even better if the lawn was uh, a living system where beetles and spiders and pollinators were all living with us yeah. while we're playing frisbee on the lawn. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> there is a lot of that you see, especially this time of year, where like the bugs are really coming in because oh, lawns yeah. are a great ecosystem for them. And oh yeah, and you see them really low, right? Get down. It's. I, I mean. People think I'm sleeping. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> Commonly, I'm be lying down watching dandelions, and then it looks like I'm sleeping, but I'm actually watching the things on the dandelions. Yeah. You and tell your boss. No, yeah. no, no, I'm not sleeping. Yeah, I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. Yeah. I'm watching dandelions. Yeah. yeah, maybe we'll have to try that at the college office. We're going yeah. to go look at pollinators. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for joining oh, us for this interview You're very today. welcome. That was really fun. Yeah, this has been wonderful to talk to you. It's been very enlightening about insects and pollinators and so much. Yes, it is. And I'm so excited to see this. I think that's a great idea, yeah. great initiative, and they're, uh, it's going to be really exciting to see them when they come out. You'll have to join us for the release, and I everybody so. watching, we're doing yeah. a release party when these guys are ready to be released out into the world. Well, that sounds terrific. Yeah. So we we'll hope to see you guys there, and you yeah. too. And thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're yeah. very welcome. All right. Yeah. Bye. Bye.